Welcome to another edition of Pulp Nonfiction on Pure FX. Today I'm chatting with a fellow UBC dental grad, um, Dr. Alex Rosenzweig. Um, and you practice near UBC. You've been in your current office since 2007. You started your dental career working with your mother uh, for a little bit. Now, now um, I imagine she's retired and, and you're working away. Prior to dental school, you have a biochemistry degree and that has um, served you well, especially in uh, the recent developments. And speaking of which, hypochlorous acid. Yes. There we go. Run with it. <laughs> all right. So, got a presentation all prepared. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to share the screen. So, you're going to have to allow me to prepare yes, the presentation. I'd like to give you permission. All right. Uh, yes. There we go. Okay. There we go. So, hypochlorous acid in the office is a hot and interesting topic. And I know you've done some work on it, and so it'll be quite interesting to hear what you have to say. Uh, yep. So there's me in my office, uh -huh. in my younger years when I first took over. Uh -huh. <laughs> Less gray hairs. So uh -huh. I'm, uh, as you mentioned, uh, I'm also a clinical instructor at the university. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been teaching endodontics there, and then I uh, also have my degree in biochemistry along with my dental degree from there. Mm -hmm. Moving on. So. Quick and dirty of hydrochloric acid, hydrochlorous acid, not hydrochloric, different, very different. Um, mm -hmm. Today we're going to talk about what is, uh, sorry, hypochlorous acid, my bad, hypochlorous acid. How can I get it? What is it used for? And how do I use it? So, first of all, it's a weak acid that exists in water. Our good old uh, chemistry equations from back in the day. Um, we can make it through commercial means. You can actually purchase it. Um, or we can make it in the office if you like to tinker. Um, here's uh, the synthesis of hypochlorous acid. Um, ver you know, there's a few different ways. The one at 2B is the one that they talk about um, that uh, I guess is, is, is the reaction, uh, sorry, the, where is it, uh, three, um, the preferred method is uh, equation two, they say, using chlorine gas. But um, anyways, we use salt, sodium chloride. Um, you can buy it commercially, but I'm not gonna talk too much about the equation because uh, we're not uh, here to learn about chemistry. We're learning about how to use it and uh, make it. So talking about commercial, um, they give you the desired concentration and the preferable pH. We don't have to tinker. There's no fuss, no mess. You just open it up and use it. I would not recommend diluting it because you're gonna lose the effective strength. So somebody gives you a 500 parts per million solution, you can't just dilute that five times with water to, make, to give you 100 parts per million because you're gonna disrupt the buffer reaction that's going on in there because um, you want it at a pH of six and that's where, where I'm gonna show you and talk about where the most stable form and the most reactive form of the um, chemistry of the hypochlorous acid that we want to use. Um, the one thing though is don't go out and buy a ton of the stuff. It does have a limited shelf life because of oxygenation. And basically when that happens, you lose the effectiveness. They recommend that uh, you keep any solution in a dark place with no opaque bottle and a good tight lid. Um, uh. Now, get on with the good stuff. Um, buying electrolyzed or making high electrolyzed salt water. You can buy this machine off AliExpress. eBay, it's a little bit harder to get right now. That's where I bought my machine. Um, uh, actually here, that's the machine I bought. So you gotta tinker with it a little bit. Actually, when I got it, I realized the measurements on the actual glass there were off. They were, I put in half a liter and it said I had 600 milliliters. So it was off by 100 milliliters. So don't trust the markings on the glass if you do buy it. Unfortunately, they come from China. But does the machine work? Yes, it does. And um, as you can see, the various prices, you can you know, spend around 100 bucks or so. eBay, AliExpress, and Alibaba. I just put them up with the look for. I would personally go for the one that looks like a kettle. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but the kettle designs. Yeah. Those are the ones that I would go for. Um, I would not go for the spray bottle design that you plug in because if the spray bottle goes, you're kind of hooped. Right, you're, you're, I'd rather transfer it to a bottle to use myself. 
So um, I, when you're making this stuff, make sure you use distilled water without impurities. Um, use kosher salt. And then you're going you're gonna to buffer the solution to make it stable and also bring out that strong uh, hypochlorous acid um, uh, compound that we want that's stable, that's also very effective for cleaning. Um, and you're going to use vinegar to do that. And you're going to use a few drops. You're going to have um, uh, pH test strips. I recommend that you have the full range of pH testing on your pH test strips and chlorine test strips up to 200 parts per million. Um, because these machines make it pretty strong and you want to make sure that you're able to dilute it down to about 100 parts per million. I'd say between 100 and 150. Um, um, now, the thing is, is with the, uh, um, the water, yeah. I think it's more than just preferred. You, you almost think that's a, a rule, right? I use it as a rule because the impurities are going to wreck your machine because you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna contaminate your electrodes and it's going to be harder to buffer the solution as well because you're going to have all these other like fluoride ions. In, well, we don't have fluoride in ours, but you could have fluoride ions in it, um, other impurities from the pipes or whatever. So it's mm -hmm. easier. It's cleaner chemistry. Just use distill, distilled water. I, that's my recommendation for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, save yourself some grief. Yeah, so there we go. So using tap water introduces impurities, wreck your machine. You, um, uh, it will affect the concentration of the hypochlorous acid being made. Um, you will lose the effective sanitizing power of your solutions. And once again, in bold, use distilled water and kosher salt. Uh, the reason why we want kosher salt is uh, other salts have like um, iodine added to it, so you don't want to, or you don't want to have any other things inside the salt, just sodium chloride. Um, now, when you first make it with the machine, it has a pH of around eight or more, um, and the the reactive species of HOCl is very minimal in this range. And I'm going to show you a graph in a second. The ideal range is five to six, but for office use, I recommend six because it's very close to be being neutral pH, which is pH seven. Here's the uh, reaction. Why closer to neutral than acidic? Uh, well, neutral because um, we also don't want it uh, wrecking our equipment, right? So any, uh, any acidity or whatever, the closer it is to neutral, the better. But unfortunately, we can't have it at being pH of seven because we lose about 50% of our reactive species, which is the HOCl up here. If you can see that, uh, so pH between five and six, we get the most reactive species. You know, six, if you're going to be down to about, let's say, ninety percent of your uh, the species that you want, but you're 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 closer. You're not going to be as acidic, so that's why I would say you might want to be down to maybe have 150 parts per million um, in solution of chloride um, ion when you use your um, uh, PPM strips for chloride. And from a chemical perspective. Uh, for what you want to have happen, there isn't much benefit of being a pH 3 or 4 because you're not having um, necessarily higher reactive agents. No. Reactive yeah. So, so you can the wall at 5, anything below 5, and you just have all the drawbacks of an acidic mist. Yeah, it's going to be acidic. and um, uh, But also they say the optimum disinfection, even down here, it says between pH uh, 5 to 6.5 where HOCl is the pre uh, prevailing species of okay. free chlorine present. All right. All right. Great mind to take away. Yes. So um, first off, when you make this um, solution, whatever machine you have, you follow kind of the instructions. There's always a learning curve. I was tinkering with mine. Um, you want to determine the PPM with the chloride test strips. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to dilute it down with distilled water to about a thousand parts per million. Then that's where you're gonna buffer it to make it slightly more acidic. Because remember, when it comes out of the machine, it's very basic, it's a pH of eight. Um, and I would almost do it sometimes drop by drop or bit by bit, because if you add too much, you're gonna really um, uh, push the reaction down to the lower end of the pH scale. So you want, uh, I'd say an optimum pH of around six. Um, one of the key things with, um, uh, with one that you make in the office for the hypochlorous acid, um, you want to store it in the opaque bottles. 
um, uh, good tight lid. And bef when you go to use it again, if it's been in storage, I, I recommend just doing a quick little test of the solution just to make sure that you got the right pH and you got the effective uh, parts per million of chloride uh, in it for the species because it, uh, some, some people say it lasts a month, some people say it lasts 48 hours, but uh, the best thing to do if you're gonna use it for the day, just do a little uh, dab of each uh, test strip just to make sure that you got the, the right solution going. Here's an example of the test strips that you can buy. Um, it's a hydrion uh, chlorine test strips, and you can see they have 10, 50, 100, and 200 parts per million. So I usually get it just a little bit darker than this purple, but not as dark as this uh, 200 parts per million, which is almost black. So I'd say like a dark purple is, is, uh, is the best way to get it. Um, you can also get uh, pH test strips which is great because um, I recommend the full range because you want to make sure that um, uh, some, uh, actually I ended up getting test strips from Canadian Tire, but it kind of stopped at pH five and below that, I didn't know if, if that was five or too acidic, but uh, with uh, the test strips, you can um, make sure you have the full range from at least zero to eight or 10 or 13. And that way you can bring it down to the proper acidity. Um, there's a standard recipe for making um, a one liter, 100 parts per million solution. This is from a company that, that sells their own machine. It's quite expensive. It's about $200, $250 US. But I decided to try their method of making the, uh, uh, the, the hypochlorous acid, and it actually worked quite well. So I used uh, two grams of kosher salt dissolved in one liter of distilled water. They recommend a teaspoon of white vinegar to buffer. However, this is my little part, uh, my little deviation. Uh, I, I, I want to titrate it down to get to at least six or around six. So I would hold off on it. I would make the machine first, uh, run it for eight minutes. Then I would titrate with the acetic acid or the white vinegar to get the pH of six, adding you can do drop by drop because you only need a teaspoon. But... Sometimes you need more, sometimes you need less, because these machines, they're not exact. Um, and once again, um, test the parts per million of the chloride species and pH to make sure that you have the uh, correct ranges. Now, what is uh, hypochlorous acid used for? This is a non-toxic disinfectant. You can dip your hand in this. You can soak your arm when it's at the right pH and the right PPMs. Uh, there are studies out there that's showing that this is actually biocompatible. There are, I don't want to be a Donald Trump, but some people are saying they use it as a mouthwash. I don't know. I haven't done it yet, but uh, um, uh, I would say let's just to stick to um, uh, making this and cleaning the operatories. Um, we actually do make this naturally in our bodies, in our white blood cells, and the solution has an effective uh, range against bacteria, prions, and viruses. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a study of um, they used sodium hypochlorite, but they also used um, hypochlorous acid, basically electro electrolyzed um, oxidizing water-based uh, solutions. And you can see down on the bottom for the conclusions. I'm sorry that this is small. I think I blew it up in the next slide. Yes, I did. So um, conclusions are both uh, sodium hypochlorite and hypochlorous acid. Uh, revealed that uh, they had similar antibacterial efficacy against uh, E. faecalis and strep mutants. Um, and while sodium hypochlorite, as you know, dissolves tissues, the HOCl showed um, uh, little toxicity. Basically, um, it reaffirms its also potential for uh, using as an alternative irrigation when doing uh, vital pulp therapies. So if you don't want to kill the pulp, but you want to disinfect it, the study showed that uh, we can actually use um, hypochlorous acid. Um, so here's a study that came out that was reviewed. And um, in terms of prions, that uh, it shows that it's an excellent disinfecting activity against prions and several other pathogens without toxicity again. Um, talking about fog-based applications. So we're going to vaporize it or we're going to aerosolize it. And um, uh, they concluded at the bottom that uh, HOCl as a liquid or a fog is likely to be effective against disinfecting uh, common settings with, um, this is a norovirus, this study had, 
and, um, uh, and also control the spread of fomites. And, um, and this was a really, actually a really good experiment. Um, they're talking about the virus, uh, virucidal activity against uh, avian flu. And this is where I determine what concentrations we want to use. And right here where my mouse is, they said um, uh, when uh, sodium hy hy when hypochlorous acid uh, solutions were sprayed directly on uh, the virus with rayon sheets for 10 seconds, um, the solutions of 100 and 200 parts per million could inactivate the virus immediately after spraying, whereas the 50 parts per million solution, they required three minutes of contact time. So there you go. That's, so that's why my favorite concentration is between 100 and, and 200 parts per million. Um, and uh, here's another study. Um, they talk about uh, viruses in the air basically using it as an airborne disinfectant. And they actually, a lot of this is done in veterinary medicine, a lot of these studies. Um, but uh, they, here you go at the bottom, it says the data suggests that um, uh, solutions containing 100 parts per million uh, of chlorine can be used for aerosol disinfection of uh, the viruses in the farms. So this was new, Newcastle disease virus in, in animals. So why can't we just use this solution? It's targets prions, it targets bacteria, and it uh, targets viruses. However, there are unfortunately resistant bacteria. So we are still gonna have to use our cavi wipes and our um, other solutions, whether it's uh, germaphene or, or, or germicide, whatever we're using in the operatories, this is an adjunct. And um, uh, they, they found that various strains can protect themselves from bleach and hypochlorous acid. So if you think that this is the one shot all killing solution, it's not. Um, another um, uh, uh, case uh, study where they found that uh, even um, E. coli had resistance to the solution. So what's it used for? It's effective against bacteria, viruses, and prions. Uh, the CDC recently approved it for the fight against uh, COVID-19. Um, we only need 100 parts per million to kill the viruses instantly, and it's non-toxic um, at concentrations of with with at these concentrations with a pH of six. How do I use it? You can use it as a wipe down. You can place it in a spray bottle um, to miss the area. You can use an um, ultra low volume fogger. You can Google this, but they're extremely difficult to find. You can get them from China, but um, through Alibaba and eBay, but they're, they're not the easiest things to find. Or you can um, put it through an ultrasonic humidifier, put a couple in the office and just kind of let it go in the air. Um, this is the example of from Home Depot Canada. Um, this is the Ryobi, this, I actually have this fogger. Um, it's on sale, but as you can tell, it's not sold in stores and it's, uh, it's out of stock shipping. And uh, these are gems to find. If you ever find one on Home Depot, I'd say buy it if you're gonna use the hypochlorous acid. Um, here is the ultrasonic uh, humidifier. Make sure it's ultrasonic. And also with the fogger, make sure it's not the thermal fogger because you don't wanna cook it. And same thing with the humidifier, make sure it's the ultrasonic because uh, you don't want any heat. You want to basically create an aerosol uh, with the ultrasonic mist because in the dental office, we're creating aerosols and that's what we're afraid of or we're concerned about. So what better way to combat this than creating a antivirusal or um, a virusidal, uh aerosol ourselves. Uh, so conclusion. Hypochlorous acid is an excellent adjunct to fighting COVID-19 based on its effectiveness at killing other pathogens. It's non-toxic at the recommended 100 parts per million and the pH around six. It's cheap to make, or uh, if you know how, or readily, avail readily available uh, pre-made so you don't have to fuss around and, and worry about your solutions all the time. Um, so is it rather, readily available? I think it's hard to get. I think people want it all No, out, right? there, there's companies that are making it here. And uh, I spoke huh. to, um, uh, I, I forgot, I was put in touch with somebody. Uh, I wish I had it, um, but uh, uh, I, I think um, some of the dental supply companies are gonna be in touch with, the, with this one company that I was, uh, was referred to and talked to them. And they, they seem to make, like they're, they're making it by the gallons. Like they're, they're pumping that up pretty big. 
And they charge them pretty penny, I imagine, for it. Yes. So that's the other thing. The solution is expensive. I think 20 liters was around 150 bucks or something like that. And the only thing is, is that it's going to be tough to go through 20 liters in your office, right? Like unless they stabilize it, but you're going to have to be careful with it, storing it and um, uh, uh, using it up. Uh, and then also as your bottle gets more and more empty, you have, you have more and more air inside your bottle that you're, that you're pouring it out of, right? So they give you the big 20, 20 liter container. And as you pour it down, there's more air inside. So therefore you're, it's becoming oxidized. You're losing that, the, the effective killing power against COVID-19. Yeah. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> in a day, well, how much do you think would be worth using per operatory? Well, I mean, the humidifiers, I think, because they go so slow, you know, you're probably looking at maybe 250 milliliters, if that, you know, in each humidifier, uh, the ultrasonic humidifiers. Um, it really depends on how many patients you go through. And remember, you're, you're spraying a mist inside. Um, yeah. uh, I'm thinking you might go through maybe two, three liters, maybe if you're like really or uh, four liters if you're really generous, you know, really, really spraying down, right? But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I have to admit, um, I just spoke to some, you know, there are concerns about uh, the effectiveness on vinyl, and my next thing is I'm actually going to be doing a little experiment. I, I got uh, one of the, the guy who reupholstered my dental chair a couple of years back. He's going to give me some sample uh, vinyl, and I'm going to do a little experiment and see uh, uh, the different Who concentrations. Who listens to records in the office anyway? Sorry? <laughs> Who listens to records in the office anyway? Is it yeah. all uh, radio? Don't yeah. worry about your vinyl. Leave your vinyl at home. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm sorry. I digress. Yeah, yeah. So you're doing a little experiment. That's, that's, that's really good. It'll be interesting to see because there are a lot of people kicking up two big fusses. Yeah, your upholstery, right? Your vinyl and um, your metal. Yeah, um, I've heard mixed reviews. Some people say it it uh, does direct your stuff, and I've heard other other reviews that it doesn't. So yeah. I figured I'm going to test it out myself. And mm -hmm. but I'm thinking if you don't make it too strong, keep it at 100 parts per million. You keep it as neutral as possible with a pH around six. You're going to be okay. I think it's the people that were making it out of the machine, and they were using it at a pH of 8.4 which is, I think, a little bit too, too basic. Um, and you didn't have the proper species of, um, uh, of hypochlorous acid in there at its full strength, like a, at a higher concentration, because you can dip your hand in it. Like that's, that's what everything says. This is completely biocompatible, and it's, uh, it's not toxic. So I think that has something to do with it. Okay. Now, what's uh, the Alex protocol? Patient walks in. The office and you stick them up them no I, I i don't do that i i i i would basically if i'm doing an aerosol generating procedure um i would um aerosolize the operatory and um uh and, and of course i i'm you know would might have this passively going on in the air anyways um i do have my air purifiers going on in the office right now um, uh, like I said, this is an adjunct, you know, we're going to do as much as we can. And this is kind of like the new thing. Uh, the great thing about this is that it kills COVID on contact at a hundred parts per million. And that's key where our, our cave wipes and other solutions, we have to leave it on there for a while. Um, so what you can do is, you know what, if, if you maybe just want to wipe your stuff down with this, like your operatory, wipe it down with a wet cloth or a two by twos, like you normally do. And um, as with this solution on hand, um, technically you could wipe it down with your bare hands if you wanted to. It's not going to wreck your stuff. But in terms of you know cross contamination and uh, not getting your hands soiled with other stuff, yeah, you can put some gloves on, wipe wipe the operatory down with it, and then you can use your cavi wipes. So it's kind of like a dual wipe down, and um, or, or you can use your cavi wipes and then uh, then aerosolize the the operatory and have it you know land all over. Um, you don't have to soak it, but uh, like I said, just uh, aerosolize it for fomites and then it will land um, with the other aerosols as well. 
Yeah, and that fogger uh, from Home Depot is not um, quiet. It is rather noisy and industrial sounding, right? Yes, but I won't have patients in between when I'm basically tearing an op operatory down. That's, you know, they're not going to be in that operatory. So the only person that's going to hear it is me and my staff. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's not something you necessarily want to bring out when a patient walks in. Uh, you know, I've heard of dentists spraying their patients down with it. Um, yeah. So, you know, practice how you will. You know, if this is just, uh, like I said, I'm just giving us some information on how to uh, make this stuff and how to get it and how you want to use it to disinfect your office. Have at her. That's what I say. Yeah. No, I know how those guys feel. Sometimes I want to shoot patients too with hyperbolic yeah. acid. <laughs> yeah. All right. Drop an acid in the office. Always a good idea. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> so you're, uh, yeah, you're using it. It's, um, I, I saw you making it. It is a, a bit of a learned art. Um, yes. But I think it's one of those things after making a few batches, as long as you're um, double checking your strips, watch the videos, it's not that complex to make. No, if you like tinkering and you're gonna, you know, measurements, but yeah. the, the key thing is make sure you got the test strips. Um, both yeah. of them are important. That way, you know, that uh, you got the, uh, the right concentrations of each. And I think also you're not gonna destroy your equipment from all the research that I've been doing. Um, so, uh, yeah. but uh, I'm definitely gonna test it on the, on the vinyl. Uh, there is a fire department in the States that's using it on their trucks and everything. And uh, so they're using it without problems. So I guess, you know, if they're using it on their Chrome, really nice shiny fire engines and their equipment, then perhaps, you know, there's some uh, validity to the fact that the stuff, uh, you can make it safe so it doesn't uh, wreck your equipment. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you you don't want to be swimming in this stuff. So you know, it, it maybe too much of a good thing is too much. Yeah, and so maybe be a bit judicious with it. Yeah, I'm from my perspective, from what I've seen, I'm not going to use a big fogger because I can't get it yeah. for love nor money. Uh, I'm going to try the little humidifier guys, yeah. and you get a little spray bottle. Yep, pretty pretty light footprint in the office, and I'm. Probably going to go now with a wipe as well. Get them to wipe a couple surfaces, and and not go too crazy. I think, yeah, you can destroy your vinyl, maybe, maybe not, and and you can corrode your metal, maybe, maybe not. But I think if if you don't go too crazy with the volume, your vinyl is probably going to be okay. And if you use your test strips, I think your metal is going to be okay. Does that ring a bell with you? Does that seem like a yeah? Problem? You know, that's that's uh, you know that's what I'm. That's the page that I'm on because, uh, you know, there, there are dental offices in the world. I know two of them that made YouTube videos. You can, you can Google them. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I wish I didn't want to put them up because I didn't want to steal the thunder or whatnot. But uh, you can find these videos online. Um, Ooh, but I think it we, can, we can put them uh, beside this video so that people okay. can okay. look. So at least they get the credit of, um, you know, someone looking at their video. Right. Yeah. And yeah, the whole sure. point is we're supposed to share information. So th these videos were useful to you and they inspired you. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and credit due to those fellows and yes. ladies who uh, did that. Right. Yes, yeah, certainly. Oh, oh, so how did you stumble upon this? Um, uh, CDA up at UBC um, yeah. sent me this video of, I think it's a dentist, a dental implant clinic in either Korea or Taiwan. And they talked about what their protocol was for, um, treating, um, patients in middle of COVID. And this was like March, like, like right when we, we got hit or everything kind of shut down in Canada. And yeah. maybe the first week in or whatever, and I saw that video, and all of a sudden he starts mentioning this hypochlorous acid. I've never heard of it. I've heard of hydrochloric acid, but not hypochlorous acid. And they talked about the spraying down of the operatory. They talked about a few other things about um, using a mouthwash rinse. Of course, we're also using here. Um, ADA recommends the um, the peroxide mouth rinse, um, 
and uh, you know all these different adjuncts to make the office safer for everybody and they they have this fogger that's going and they you know they showed the fogger and they're fogging the operatories uh, with this huge machine and then I just started going from there. I'm like, what is this stuff? And I did some research on it. And the more I read about it, and as soon as I saw its virucidal activity and its antimicrobial activity, I was just like, wow, this stuff really, really works. Um, the chemistry on how it kills the viruses, basically it's a chloride species that goes into the virus and disrupts the synthesis of the DNA or the RNA. And uh, you know, I was, I was pretty much sold right then. It was a while before it got acceptance in the States. It's only a few weeks ago that the CDC made recommendation that, that this is effective against uh, fighting uh, COVID-19. So I think it was something that was uh, slowly coming over to North America. Um, and then all of a sudden it, it became the new hot solution um, to, to use in, in, in dentistry. But there, there, are, there are studies showing it's used in veterinary medicine, um, uh, on farms and also used in hospitals. So I was wondering, you know, why we never heard of it. So now we have. And yeah. um, uh, also, all the research I did was uh, journal peer reviewed. I went onto the uh, UBC uh, library catalog and started pulling off dental article or journal articles that I could find that uh, corroborated. Uh, all the information that I was uh, listening to and, and heard about. So I just want to make sure that there was validity to everything. Yeah. You're not just shooting from the hip. No, no. I was like, were there any of you guys, you know, find this information out. So. Well, we'll append those articles um, to the interview as well. So people can double check that. And, yeah. Uh, I, I posted every, all the information if they want to Google it. Um, on the, on the web slide on, on the, on the, on the slides here that I had. Yeah. So yeah. that's there, but yeah, we can definitely pin all those, or, or pin all, all those articles to, to the presentation. Yeah. So this is, um, and it, it's a compliment your other protocols to treating patients in the new normal. Is that right? And I, I'm sorry for using that term it's been abused the new normal, but it's not the only thing you should be doing, but it's a good thing. And uh, if you, um, the market's kind of demanding it. People are going to want us to see us to do some stuff. Not that I'm trying to belittle all that you showed us, but um, it does have a certain, um, uh, you say qua to it, right? The yes. patient yes. is actually doing something and, and, and we are doing something and there is some science behind it. It is effective and we're not breathing in stuff that's, bad to our mucous membranes. Um, the other thing is I've heard that it has a very strong bleach smell or um, swimming pool smell. I think if you make it with the proper pH and 100 ppms, you, it's very slight. I don't notice it. Um, and so I, that's why I wonder when they're talking about when other um, yeah. interviewers, they, they say it has a, a very, very strong bleach or chlorine smell. I I don't get that. So they might be using it differently. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you are getting that, then you might want to double check your uh, the makeup of your solution. And you could be, yeah, having it way too acidic or way too basic. Something's amiss. Yeah. It's, it's pretty nonchalant at the, at the right concentration, low impact on you. And a lot, slight smell is kind of a nice smell. It's kind of like, oh, it smells a bit like a pool. It you know, it's clean. clean. Exactly. Oh, 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 so make sure it passes a smell test. Don't necessarily farm this out to your staff till you're really good at doing it. And then, and, and then make sure if you are farming out staff that they do want to do it, because if they don't want to do it and they end up doing it wrong, um, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of drawbacks to that. Yes. You might make a solution that's not effective at all. Um, yeah. or you might make a solution that wrecks your equipment. So, <laughs> <laughs> Pick your poison. Yeah, yeah. Proceed with caution. And as a caveat, yes, these are uh, just um, two of us chatting. Um, it's up to you as a professional and an adult to play, play properly and take responsibility for your own actions. <laughs> Do your own yeah. research. You know, don't take research. my word. Yes, yes. Big, big boys and girls. 
All right. Well, this is absolutely fantastic. It's wonderful information. I will be uh, playing with this on Thursday for sure. Um, my little chemistry set. Got to go buy my kosher salt and my white vinegar. And then um, it's take it off my fish and chips, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> you can disinfect your fish and chips, apparently. Actually, at 50 parts per million. I didn't say that. But at 50 parts per million, you can actually wash your fruits and, fruits and vegetables with it. There you go. So, de de decontaminate your fruits and vegetables, and it's non-toxic. So That's a safe way to go. Right? Yes. Yeah, your groceries. You can decontaminate your groceries. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, home use as well. Yeah. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, have you got any any other pearls of wisdom on this topic per se? Uh, tough to say. Um, I think I when I made this presentation up, I tried to include as much information as I could, but also the science behind it and the studies behind it. So people knew that I wasn't just making stuff up, but uh, um, as you can tell, the repeated theme is 100 parts per million pH six, and this is an adjunct. It's not the one and all cleaning solution. So do everything that you can that you feel makes you safe and your staff safe, and of course your patients safe uh, during these unique times. Perfect. You summed it up beautifully there. Well, thank you so much, Alex. That thank you for having me. Sorry? Thank you for having me. Oh, you're most welcome. Yeah, it, was, it was wonderful. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm definitely going to be incorporating this as well. And uh, I hope many other people consider it too. Perfect. Yeah, we will. Uh, I'm sure we'll chat again. I think you have some other things brewing that you uh, will eventually be able to show us. Uh, yes. Uh, I have to make sure that uh, everything is safe before we divulge the information and that's the key yes, safety first absolutely this is your 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 giving and then yeah. the other device uh it, or uh, approach or subjects might be more taking away bad stuff yes yeah we'll uh yeah, yeah. they know more on that <laughs> yes we'll <see laughs> thanks no john well, th thanks again man all right cheers cheers